solving trigonometric equations. So let's get straight into an example where we're looking to solve sine x equals minus a half, where x has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Now, in order to solve trigonometric equations, we need to remember our unit circle that describes the behavior of sine, cos, and tan uh, functions. So our unit circle that describes it tells us that if we have sine, cos, or tan of an angle in the first quadrant, they're all positive. Only sine of an angle in the second quadrant is positive. Only tan of an angle in the third quadrant is positive, and only cos of an angle in the fourth quadrant is positive. And if we have some base angle that we're dealing with theta, the we can think of this quadrant, yeah, we can think of this quadrant as our base angle theta, and we get an identical triangle in this quadrant where we can express it. So if we're starting off with zero degrees, then moving up to pi on two degrees, then pi, and then three pi on two, all the way back to two pi, we can think about this angle being pi minus that base angle. We can think of this identical triangle being pi plus our base angle. And we can think of this identical triangle being two pi minus our base angle, which we've already covered before, but that's a little, that's a quick little recap. Now, the first step in solving a trig equation is to get that base angle that we're referencing here. So what, what's the equivalent base angle that we need? And to do that, all we need to do is just take, once we have, once we have our trig function isolated and equaling a constant, we just take the inverse sine of that constant. And if there is a negative, like in this case, we just disregard it just to get our base angle the inverse sine of a half is pi on six. So this is our base angle that we're dealing with. So we can reference this as being theta in our unit circle. Now then we actually do look at the sine. We do look at the sine over here. So because it's negative, we have to check where, where sine of an angle is negative. And sine of an angle that's negative happens in the third and the fourth quadrant because only sine is positive in the first quadrant and sine is positive in the second quadrant. And we know we've got a negative answer, so we must have an answer in the third and the fourth quadrant. And answers in the third and fourth quadrant are gonna, are gonna give us our values for x. So we know x is gonna equal to pi plus our base angle in the third quadrant, which is pi on six, and two pi minus our base angle, which is pi on six in the fourth quadrant, and we get answers for x equaling 7 pi on 6 and 11 pi on 6 for our answers for x. Let's look at another example. So we're looking at tan squared x equaling 1 and we're solving in the domain where x is between 0 and 2 pi. And we draw up our unit circle just to help us. And we need to isolate the trig function. So we have tan squared x, not just tan x. So we're going to go ahead and square root both sides. And because we're square rooting an unknown that was squared, we need to introduce a plus or minus. So we have plus or minus 1. And now we're looking for values of tan that are both positive and negative. And in that case, we're looking at all four quadrants because tan is positive and or negative in all four quadrants. Next, we'll get our base angle theta, which is just going to be the inverse tan of one. So we disregard any negatives and we get our base angle of pi on four. So we know if there's an answer involved here, it's just going to be the base angle itself. Answer over here is pi minus the base angle, pi plus the base angle, 
and 2 pi minus the base angle. So our answers for x are going to be the base angle itself in the first quadrant, pi minus the base angle, which is pi on 4, pi plus the base angle, which is pi on 4, and 2 pi minus the base angle of pi on 4. So we're going to get final answers for x being pi on 4, we're going to get 3 pi on 4, 5 pi on 4, and 7 pi on 4 for our final values for x, so we get 4 answers. So we've got another question. We're going to have, we're going to solve for x when we have sine x plus root 3 cos x equaling 0. Now, this is a bit trickier because we have two trigonometric functions here that we're adding together, and it'd be nice if we only had one. And so we're trying to solve for x is in between 0 and 2 pi as well. So it'd be nice if we had one trig function, so one way to do this might be to divide everything by cos x. So when we do that, sine x divided by cos x gives us tan x. Cos divided by cos just gives us 1, so we're left with root 3, and 0 divided by cos x is just 0. And now we can subtract root 3 from both sides, so we just get tan x equals negative root 3. So again, let's note down our unit circle to help us out. And we're looking for values of tan that are negative. And those values of tan that are going to be negative is going to happen in the second and the fourth quadrant. Where in our second quadrant, we have pi minus our base angle. And in our fourth quadrant, we have 2 pi minus our base angle. So we need that base angle. So we can get that base angle by just doing the inverse tan of root 3. So we disregard that negative again. And that's going to give us a base angle of pi over 3. Then once we have that base angle, we can solve for x, because we know x is going to be the two answers, the one in the second quadrant, which is pi minus the base angle, so pi minus pi over 3. And in the fourth quadrant, we get 2 pi minus our base angle, which is pi over 3. So we get our final answers for x being 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Let's look at another example where we have sine 2x equals minus a half and we're solving for when x is between 0 and 2 pi. So the difference this time is that we, have, we don't have sine x, we have sine of 2x and this is actually going to change our domain. So we should change our domain to reflect this. So how would we change an x into a 2x? Well, we just have to multiply everything by 2. So 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi, which basically just means we need to look at two revolutions of the unit circle. So let's draw our unit circle. And this time we're looking at where values of sine are negative. We know that's going to happen in the third and the fourth quadrant, where in our third quadrant we have pi plus our base angle, and in our fourth quadrant we have 2 pi minus our base angle. So let's go ahead and find that base angle. So we're going to have theta equaling the inverse sine of a half. So that means theta is going to be pi over 6. And that means we can now solve for 2x. So careful not to solve for x, we're solving for 2x. And that's going to be pi plus our base angle in the third quadrant and 2 pi minus our base angle in the fourth quadrant. But because our domain has changed and we have to look at two revolutions, 
That just means all we have to do is take our answers that we have so far and add 2 pi to them. So we're going to take our answer of pi plus pi over 6 and add 2 pi to it. Then we're going to take our answer of 2 pi minus pi over 6 and add 2 pi to it. So we're going to get 2x equals 7 pi over 6. 2 pi minus pi over 6 is going to be 11 pi over 6. And we're just taking these answers and adding 2 pi to both of them. So that's going to give us adding 2 pi to 7 pi over 6 is going to give us 19 pi over 6. And adding 11 pi over 6 to 2 pi is going to give us 23 pi over 6. And finally, we can solve for x by dividing everything by 2. So dividing everything by 2 will just cause us to times the denominator by 2. So we get x equals 7 pi over 12, 11 pi over 12, 19 pi over 12, and 23 pi over 12 is our final answers. Mm -hmm.